Defending a village in Minecraft 1.14 is actually pretty simple. However, because villages have all different shapes and sizes, it takes a long time to protect one, no matter what technique you use. However, in this video, I want to show you a bunch of different ways on how to defend one from the pillagers and, of course, the normal ambient mobs. So, let's get into it. As you can see here, I've got five examples and this is just to simplify the whole thing and to show you each technique in turn and then I'll show you what it looks like around a proper village. So, this is our fake village at the end of here and this just makes it simple. So, I'm gonna spawn a pillager here. He'll run and he'll start shooting Perkins over here. Hello, Perkins. Nice to see you. You're going to be our little uh, tester for now and this technique is one that I call plants versus pillagers. So the way that we're going to defend Perkins over there is by creating a wall using two of the new blocks in Minecraft, the sweetberry bush and the bamboo. Now, each one of these has varying degrees of success. The benefits of this one is that it's incredibly cheap because all we've got to do is find some bamboo, let it grow, harvest it, and the same with the sweet berries. So here's the principle behind it. And each of these will have massive pros and cons. So around the village, and this would take a long time, like I said, all of these take a long time to do, you plant all this bamboo. Now, all this does is confuse the pillagers' pathing mechanics. And then either side of the bamboo, you can put some sweet berry bushes or even mix in layers and layers of them. So you could even put some sweet berry bushes mixed in with the bamboo to try and force them to get in there and take some damage as they go against the pillagers. And the other benefit is that it is a natural defense. This is all plant material and it does create a really weird effect. But anyway, let's just bone meal this to speed up the process. Okay, that looks like a pretty formidable defense. Now the thing is, pillagers won't walk through sweet berry bushes. All they do is stop here. However, if you didn't have the bamboo here to block their way, they would still be able to shoot this guy if he had the range, because obviously it's only one block high. But you mix in the bamboo and they get very confused. This is a very cheap and easy way to make a wall and it looks all natural. Spawn in a few pillagers here. You can see he's going straight for the villager. He's trying to make his way through the bamboo forest and he's taking damage as he goes along. So as you mix them in, it does damage as they walk through and I've obviously done a pretty bad job here. I could have put more sweet berry bushes in, but now they're stuck. They, they are taking damage and they can't get through. So there's lots of benefits to this. Obviously, I can harvest these and just create more and more sweet berry bushes. Now, even if I let these guys through, somehow they get through, they would just stop there. However, obviously, if they can see me, they will start shooting. But if they're just jumping like that, it gives you the free ability to just shoot them through the gaps in between. Although, be careful, because they might shoot back. So if you created a really big wall with all the sweet berry bushes and bamboo, they would probably take enough damage to actually die from these, but it is quite a lengthy process. Perkins, I believe you have lived to tell another tale. But what does this actually look like in a real scenario? So let's go and cover a real 114 village with this wall defense, and let's see who wins in Plants versus Pillagers. So I'm going to take the bad omen effect into my village surrounded by the berry bushes and the bamboo. The raid actually ended up not working. I'm in a flat world and I just struggled to get it going. So I actually just spawned them in with eggs. It's exactly the same thing. They locked onto the villagers and it worked. Surprisingly, they can shoot through the bamboo. So you might have a couple of casualties. The problem is the Ravager. He doesn't care at all. So the pillagers get stuck. Some of them may even die, but the Ravager just sticks around. Okay, so not a perfect design, however, it definitely works to a certain degree, but the benefits of this one are, as I said, it's very cheap and quick to make. The next defense that I want to show you is the Wall of Hurt. Now, this is a very interesting one. 
and it's a little bit more expensive. Some of these are cheap, some of these are expensive. So what we've got is a few magma blocks. Now these are easy to pick up in the nether, so they are slightly more late game. I know some people don't like going into the nether at all, but what you do is two lines of magma blocks with a block in between. You put pressure plates over them, so these walls have to be completely straight, and then you add a lava bucket in between. What this does is creates a barrier of defense. So if I place the pillagers here, they should go and see it, and then they'll stop when it hits the lava, and then they'll take damage from the magma blocks as they stand there. Obviously, they can still shoot over here. Now, who have we got here? We've got Clementine. They're safe because of the distance. So if you're going to build a wall like this, it's got to be a fair distance away from the village itself. Now, you might be wondering, why am I doing this and not just magma blocks with berry bushes? It would be exactly the same. Well, the issue comes along when we have Ravagers into the mix, because obviously a raid isn't just pillagers. They have Ravagers as well. And the Ravagers actually act a little bit differently. They will stop when they hit Magma Block, so he's not actually going to walk over it at all, which is a bit of a shame. Ravagers cause a real issue when we're doing our defense systems. And we're going to come back to that later, because it's actually a bit of a nightmare to get these guys to walk across. So this is a pretty unique way of de dealing with the pillagers. And if you don't want to use lava, because that is a, a lot of lava. Uh-oh. No, Clementine. No, 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 no. Oh, I didn't do this very well. So if you have the Sweetberry Bush, you have exactly the same effect. They will stop and then they'll take damage on the magma blocks. But the lava bucket is definitely a faster way to deal with that. So that's a cheaper way of dealing with it. And there's multiple ways in which we can use the magma blocks. I don't think I need to show you this in an example one. Because I think this one is fairly straightforward. You just have to do a big square around your village. And make sure that there's enough distance between them. Next up is a trench. So in my eyes, there's two easy ways to defend the village. There's the wall and there's the trench. We'll get to the wall a little later on, but the trench. So, I've done a few bits of experiments on this, and creating a trench is actually pretty time consuming. Even just uh, mining out this tiny little trench here, it's, it, it takes a little time. So imagine this on a full scale village. You're talking hours and hours of digging. The good news is that you don't need much. All you need is a small pit. So the main issue with this trench is most of the pillagers will stop. Some of them will walk in, so let's do a little example. We got pillagers, and they will attack each other and push each other in, but for the most part, they stop, and particularly the Ravager. He will not go across at all. So you can see that they might push each other in, but it's not the most efficient. You can't guarantee it, and if there's a villager here, they're just going to fire straight at him because they can see and they'll shoot over the trench. But you can see that this is effective, but there's a much better way to do this. And I think you'll be a bit surprised at how this actually works. So let's get rid of these guys and redesign this trench. So obviously this is a lot of excavating, but what I've done is I've basically created a staircase down. Now it has to be two blocks at a time, otherwise the ravagers won't walk down it. And this is really stupid, guys. So basically, if I spawn in the pillagers, hopefully they see them, they just walk straight into the magma blocks, they get stuck here, and then they just take loads of damage. And it's the same with the ravagers. All they do is they see the villagers, they walk straight down, and then once those pillagers are, are gone, uh, he will then take damage as well. It's seriously the easiest way. Now, you do have to take a slight precaution because the villagers may actually walk into this pit themselves by accident, just exactly like that. And then they're, they're a goner for sure. So what you can do is, again, use the sweet berry bushes because remember, the pillagers need to be able to see the villagers and have that line of sight to be able to walk down in here anyway. They just like tunnel vision and they go straight for them. So if we create a little barrier of berry bushes, which of course they can see over, these guys won't then walk because they won't go into the berry bushes. See that? He just stops straight there. And when the pillagers come, they're obviously in a panic flapping about. And then we've got our defense. So let's see what this looks like in a real setting. Because I believe that Gerald here you're not a particularly good example with your one house. We need a full village to see if this works in its entirety. So let's go and have a look. 
I spent a long time preparing this. Again, we're in a flat world just to make things a little bit visually clear. And you can imagine that if you had a village in a normal survival world, just how long it would take to excavate all of this out and then put all of those magma blocks. Huge amount of time. However, this is by far the most effective defense that I've come up with so far. The pillagers walk straight in, so do the ravagers. They barely ever take a shot at the villagers. They can't see them properly, and I've actually put in way more pillagers than is strictly necessary. You can see that they do pop off a few shots, and it does hit the villager, but on the whole, not a lot, and I did put way too many pillagers here. Total success. So let's move on to probably the most obvious one. Oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Um, jeez. I don't think I've ever seen anything like, I've never seen a villager move so fast in my life. Oh my goodness, stop. <laughs> Well, anyway, this is pillagers versus two blocks of dirt. And unfortunately, this is the easiest and I guess silliest way of defending. You literally just create a wall around your village. Literally just a wall. That's it. You don't even need three, just two blocks of dirt. If I spawn the pillagers in, they can't even see our villager over here. So Olivia here is just chilling and the pillagers will forever just stay outside of this wall. Now, obviously, the wall is the easiest way. You can easily gather enough dirt to do a too high wall, but we can do so much better than that. We can make excellent looking walls. So let's go and take a look at an example that I made earlier. So here we have one in an actual survival world this time, and I've created a sandstone wall to try and fit it in, and maybe I'll do a video later on which is actually it, and ultimately it's exactly the same as a too high wall of dirt. However, I've made it match the theme and fit in quite nicely, and let's spawn in a few pillagers to see what they do. They go straight for the iron golem that's on the outside, and this could work really well. If you popped a few iron golems on the outside of your walls, then they can take care of the raids for you while the pillagers completely ignore your villagers. However, these pillagers will eventually take care of this iron golem, and then they actually just give up. They just don't see the villagers because of the wall in the way, which is absolutely amazing. They don't care at all. So this is an extremely effective and cheap way of doing this. However, the main way to get rid of them is through iron golem spawning, which is very, very expensive. So I would call this a success. And the wall, I think, looks pretty cool as well. So yeah, it definitely works. But unfortunately, the pillagers will just hang around outside. This doesn't actually kill them at all. So, as far as it goes, it's effective, but not that effective because you haven't actually got rid of any of them. So, let's move on to our final one. Now, this one is, again, a fairly obvious one. The villagers do this themselves. Basically, you create your own iron golem army. Now, I'm not sure why that didn't spawn. There we go. So I've now got my own army. I don't need a wall. I don't need a trench. I don't need anything because the pillagers, well, let's be honest, they don't stand a chance. Even the ravagers don't stand a chance. These guys deal so much damage and they take care of them very, very quickly. But there is a very big issue with this particular design. With it being open warfare, like it is, whoa, like it is there, there's a slight issue. Basically, these guys can't be everywhere. Obviously, in this test laboratory setting, these guys are all stuck in a tube. And that's not exactly a fair experiment. So let's go and have a look what this looks like in a real setting. Because it does work, it's just not perfect. This time, I've actually got a real raid to show you, and I've put iron golems all over it to show how they would work with the terrain and stuff. And as you can see, they do a pretty good job, especially when there's only a few pillagers, because the iron golems outnumber them. Now, I did do quite a lot of iron golems, which leads me to the biggest downfall. It's so expensive. We're talking hundreds of blocks of iron to produce even a small army of iron golems, which is out of reach for a lot of players. 
However, you can see they do a lot of damage to these guys and they also free roam so they might not necessarily be in the correct place at the correct time and the iron golems can take a hit and fall themselves so you would have to constantly be replacing them. One of the benefits to this though is that you can get involved but the villagers do actually take a few losses as well. You can be building more iron golems as it goes on or you can even get involved in the fight and maybe take the last kill as I did and enjoy the hero of the village animation and sound and all of that kind of stuff. So ultimately, it's a very expensive and risky move but it's a more fun way to deal with them because it feels like you're actually going head to head with the pillagers rather than just having a trench take care of them for you. Again, it's up to you how you want to tackle those pillagers. So that is it for my defenses. There are loads and loads of ways to do this and probably more than I've shown here. You've got your plants versus pillagers, which is my favorite kooky one, but maybe not the most effective. We've got the Wall of Hurt, which is pretty effective at killing them, more so than that one, and not so expensive, but it does have to be a square. And then we've got the absolutely most efficient one, and time efficient, is the uh, Trench of Pain, as I've called it. This is probably the most eloquent design and most useful one, as the pillagers will just walk in there. And then we've got the Too High Wall of Dirt, which is effective if a not if not a little disappointing and then finally we've got the iron golem but remember none of this matters if you don't light up your village because a village will not even survive one minecraft night with all the zombies that spawn so make sure you torch it all up first before you even consider trying to defend it from raids well that's it from me everyone i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope some of these defenses work for you just to make sure that you choose the one that's suitable for you. There's no point in taking on the trench challenge if you haven't got time or the resources to make that one. Maybe you want the easy way out and want to do plant versus pillager, or maybe you just want to do a two block high wall of dirt. Any of these will work, but hopefully your villagers survive the bad omen effect. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.